say, look here, man. Now that you've been out the junk for about two weeks, don't you think it's about time you paid me my money? I told you I ain't have your money yet, man. What? Motherfucker, just what I said. I told you I ain't have your money yet, man. The fuck do you mean you ain't got the money yet? Motherfucker, you best be coming up with my cash. Man, fuck you, Tech. Fuck you think you is Ron O'Neill or something? Talking about I better pay up or else. Fuck you gonna do, nigga. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What am I doing? No. Squeeze that shit, nigga. But I'm supposed to be scared now just because you got a pistol, motherfucker? What? Just spent five fucking years in a jump. Now I told you I'm gonna pay your monkey ass when I feel like it. You better suck my dick. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review. Here's to discuss Menace to Society. Now, this is a movie from 1993 and it stars Tyron Turner, Lorenz Tate, Jada Pinkett, black people. Now, before we get into all things, I got these cheeseburgers. Nigga, what? What'd you say? I said I got these cheeseburgers. I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss Boy, these old 90s hood movies was making it real hard for L.A. You didn't want to go to L.A. You was going to get shot. You was going to wind up in a gang. You was going to sell some crack. You was going to smoke some crack. Or you was going to go to jail. Damn. Let L.A. breathe. Go back, 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 back. guys and hopefully subscribe to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the video i have to give a shout out to the person who paid for and requested this so if you happen to get your cane odog a wax sharif ass life it's not because of me it's because of this person right here thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content now getting into this movie, this movie was directed by the Hughes brothers and I always tend to forget about them. They didn't go on to direct a whole lot, but the little bit that we did get from them was really commendable that I wish they had went on to do more. Not only were they a different dynamic because they were directing movies as twins, but this was their very first movie. Like to come out the gate and do something so grand so memorable have such an impact on the culture though these are classified as hood movies there is you know great acting great story writing there is so much substance here to do that at 20 these guys were 20 you know we are uh, i believe high school dropouts at this point not only to go from this but literally a year later with them not executing any of the writing on this film we went on to write on dead presidents and direct dead presidents of course incorporate lorenz tate yet again talent like that was your first script that was your second venture into directing i really wish that they had went on to do more of course we have the american pimp movie pimp stuff holds down all that good stuff and <laughs> later on we have the venture and do uh from hell starring johnny dell which, which was a whole entire departure from what we were used to getting from them but after that they really didn't go on to do much and they kind of went their separate ways but i really wish we got some more this is a good movie now Originally, this could have been a totally different movie. This movie was gonna be filled to the brim with rappers. Of course, we were gonna have Tupac here. I think everybody remembers that infamous Yo MTV Raps interview where Ed Lover is covering his mouth because he is talking shit about the Hughes brothers. You know, he supposedly assaulted them, that whole situation. He was supposed to play Sharif here. <laughs> he was supposed to play Sharif, but he had a whole issue with the gangbanger turned Muslim outcome and he wanted to play O-Dog. 
that would have been special. That would have been special just to have him here and have him interact with Jada Pinkett in any way, just that on-screen presence. That would have been absolutely dope. But of course, that did not happen. Outside of that, Spice won. My gat screams fire. The pistol told me shoot that motherfucker. He's a liar. Hey, come through Tess on the hood. <laughs> Spice won was supposed to be Kane and R.E.N. Spence Green, but I'm raw from N.W.A. was supposed to originally be AWACS. Everything just so happened to go astray and we got the other actors here. And I'm absolutely not mad at it. As far as Lorenz Tate, Tyron Turner, Jada Pinkett, outside of maybe some music videos, of course, you know, TV show work like A Different World and things like that, this was their coming out. This, this was their first thing out the gate, especially Lorenz Tate, who came here and showed a fuck out. Now, Boys in the Hood definitely opened up the floodgates for all of these hood movies to come through. It seemed like year after year after Boys in the Hood, we got another hood movie. Of course, he has stated, you know, he got tired of these depictions of LA only being one way. This is the LA hood and I want the movie to reflect that. Now, I had not watched this movie in a very, very long time. Like, like, I forgot just how jarring it was in comparison to the other movies. Of course, in the other movies, pretty much all of them, we get, you know, Black youth, we get the inner city, we get the LA surroundings, we get the daily life, drugs, police brutality, gang violence, gun violence, and most of the time, a little prison. But here, I was like, wow, I forgot just how violent this movie was in comparison to those. Because of course, you know, hood movies are separated into two categories. We literally have the New York hood movies, your Sugar Hills, your New Jack Cities, your Fresh, your Juice. And then we have LA, we have our South Centrals, our Boys in the Hood, Set It Off, Menace to Society. This one here absolutely takes the cake. It was just like, oh, y'all thought a bitch went down a slide and Boys in the Hood? Let me show you how a bitch go down the slide. Like we killing everything. Like goddamn, like the violence was overloaded. In fact, I didn't even remember that we opened with the liquor store scene. Like, well, goddamn, we opened with the corner store with Hetty up and bye. <laughs> Hetty, pay me money. I didn't know we opened with that. I completely forgot that we had a 17 year old old dog and an 18 year old cane going in to get some faulties and this turns into full blown double homicide along with armed robbery like oh my goodness the menace and menace to society is absolutely old dog he was just looking for a reason i don't know why you acting like you cleaning up i always think somebody gonna steal some shit back the fuck like oh my goodness like just to know that even still now, especially with the culture like of LA right now, this is still happening. People are still this reckless, this ruthless, this, you know, unconcerned about human decency in life enough just because somebody just decided to say, I feel sorry for your mama. You feel sorry for what? You feel sorry for who? Oh, why you have to say that? He was almost out the store. <laughs> This movie is absolutely a blueprint of how an environment can even breed somebody like Kane, somebody like Old Dog, somebody who just has no concern for life, <laughs> no concern for anything. Like it's nothing. I am willing to take you out for a few hundred dollars. Like same thing with now people rolling up on rappers, taking their chains. Like it's not about that. I'm not concerned with you. I'm concerned with what I can get for myself in this moment. And if I have to kill you or whoops mask to do that, I will do that. Of course, we have Kane drop his bottle. I love how he's just innocent. Nigga, hurry up! Like, you better get your ass <laughs> up out of here. Like, it's just so normalized and it's absolutely terrible. Y'all remember when all the rappers was doing them faulty malt liquor, St. Eyes ass commercials? Went to the corner store. You know what I'm looking for. St. Eyes. You better sing, they dog. Biggie's verse on his commercial slap up. Using rappers to influence the youth to buy malt liquor. Good times. Now, not only did I forget about the intro, I also forgot about us cutting to the 60s Watts riots. I can really appreciate that. I'm glad that they put that there because some people have the misconception that Watts LA gang culture, this area was always this. This was like 40s, 50s. This was a whole upward mobility, black, suburb type area like 
this was a nice place to live before, but you know, other outside influences changed the culture, changed the community, all, you know, the white people moved out, bad elements came in, but like even things like uh, the housing projects that are always shown in a really negative light were built for uh, war industrial workers, you know, coming back and all the, like all of these great positive things. Like it would be a really dope movie if we could see like the transition from what those properties and communities were versus what we always see in every single hood movie. But this is not that movie and per usual, Samuel L. Jackson is about to shoot a motherfucker who owes him money. Like I love how it looks like he just walked off the set of Pulp Fiction with the sideburns and the hair like, all right, I'm here. <laughs> Hope you guys like my intro. But this uh, is the central focus of Kane and we do get a little bit of his childhood, even though it is brief, we do see that he is just simply a product of his environment and he never stood a fucking chance with his upbringing and the people who surrounded him that were supposed to protect him as parents. Candy Alexander here yet again, giving junkie, I'm a junkie, a crackhead, like <laughs> once again in a movie in the same year, like 93 must have been a rough year, child, cause Candy couldn't do nothing but play a junkie. We already had Ray Nathan, Ray Nathan, my baby, my boys. Ray Nathan tying her off in 1993 already with Sugar Hill. And we come here yet again with her needing a fix. Like she was playing the shit out of junkies in the 90s. Not only do we have that, but we have Tate here also, who is clearly already a menace to society himself and crazy to shoot a man down in his own living room in front of his children in a house full of people because he owed you some money. Like, sir, what is going on? <laughs> Not only do we have that to look up to, but on the other hand, we have Pernell outside showing us how to hold a gun. Little Ahmad from Soul Food never stood a chance. Now, of course we have Kane growing up without any parents, not much guidance. He is taken in and raised by his grandparents. You know, you act like you don't even care for the boy. Raises him up <laughs> and tries to influence him, you know, in the best positive way. But the influence of the culture, the community, the friends, the lack of parents that succumb to their own vices. And now I'm stuck growing up in the projects with no guidance with two older grandparents who believes the answer to everything is God, Jesus. All right, <laughs> but we cannot move any further without me just talking about Tyron Turner for a minute. 12, 13 year old Tyra, I knew Kane was fine. Like these old movies really influenced me as a kid, like growing up, especially as a teenager to realize what I like, like what I like in a man, like visually, like chocolate, a little short, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> The low cut, the juicy lips, the swag, like that little vulnerability that he was giving off throughout the movie, that care, like I thought Kane was so fine. Like, oh my goodness. You cannot tell me that Kane was not the cutest little nigga walking. Like, <laughs> I mean, all of the scenes in the movies, it's like, okay, he's cute, little swag, but it's one particular scene that made me go up every single time. Don't. dry that car <laughs> you better dry that car and bow them head and let me see them lips what come outside tyron turner now it's not like kane's grandparents did not try their best but the stronghold of the people who had the most influence over him was just far too much of course we have him looking up to somebody like Pernell, and where is Pernell in jail <laughs> bobby Bobby Deuce, Bobby was in jail next to his daddy, like absolutely not. <laughs> and then we have friends like Old Dog, like I didn't notice until going back to watch this movie recently, just how much of a follower that Kane was. With him just recently graduating from high school and being a mere 18 years old. Now the movie does show that he could have went any direction. It's not like, you know, you didn't have other choices or other influences in your life to show you some type of positive influence. Not only do we have your two older grandparents, but we have the presence of Ronnie. 
Now, how old was Ronnie? <laughs> how old was Ronnie? Like I was always a little conflicted with her character because she didn't seem like so much older than Kane. But Pernell was a whole lot older than Kane. So I always just put it in my mind that Ronnie was, you know, the little neighborhood cute girl who was preyed upon by the local neighborhood drug dealer. You know, you know, the little hood niggas that come and pick up the ninth graders. Like, what, sir, sir R. Kelly, get out of the parking lot. She's not out of PE yet. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it was one of those preyed up on the young girl situation, got caught up with the drug dealer, got caught up in the hype. And later after having her son or, you know, seeing where that role took Pernell, she smartened up. But much like Kane's grandparents, she continues to be that way out, that voice of reason to Kane to let him know that he does have the ability to be more and he is more. You do see that he is different from his surroundings. He is not completely engulfed in, you know, the culture, the hood shit like old dog. There is still an opportunity for you to change and choose a different life for yourself. You know, we do have the grandparent or the grandfather, you know, do you give a damn whether you live or die? Do you care? And at this point, you do not. And that's just absolutely sad to be 18 and just not give a damn about anything so much that you don't even value your own life. And if if you don't value your own life then how are you going to give a damn about somebody else's which is why old dog was the way that he was i just don't give a fuck we as an audience see the potential in kane to do more not only from his demeanor and the respect that he maybe has for his grandparents you know to maybe you know sell a little crack but sell it in secret you know i haven't went off the deep end yet <laughs> but also in the relationship that he has with ronnie and how he treats her of course this is in correlation with the relationship that he has with Pernell. you know let me make sure they're okay let me drop a little money but you do have ronnie continuing to be that voice of reason i don't want this i don't want your dirty drug money i know and if you're breaking in this house again the doors will be locked like <laughs> i don't want your money i know what you have to do in the streets to get this i don't want that i don't want you teaching my son how to hold a gun like that's not what we're about matter of fact i'm just trying to move the fuck away 911 emergency reconnect the community like I i'm trying to go to a different world i'm trying to leave i have an opportunity in atlanta and i want you to come with me get away from all of this are you going absolutely not the fact that he even had to think about it and we just see how stuck he was in those elements and feeling like this is normal this is home like Watching this, I had just realized just how much shit happened to Kane in the span of the time that we met him in that first week all the way to the end of the movie. There were so many red flags to say, get your ass up out of here. <laughs> Not do you want to come with me, but what time are we leaving? Not only does she care for him as a person, but she is attracted to him. She likes him. I always really respected the fact that he was so loyal to Pernell and had, you know, that sensibility to go that even though you're not tied to her and hell, your ass is locked up for our era. You gone, nigga. <laughs> I'm not going to pursue her because I respect you and respect her as a mother and a person that much. So she initially had to, you know, pursue him and pursue him to come i want you to come like i, I really respect like he was loyal he was an og a young og he got taken out <laughs> no no but <laughs> We are choosing to still revel in those elements. Like from the time that he graduated to the time that we went to the neighborhood party, cousin Harold got shot. Break yourself, fool. Yo, I ain't going out like no chump. Nigga, break yourself. Get out the car. <laughs> I love those things. Get, get out the car, nigga. Break your leg. Oh my gosh, it's so aggressive to think that people was really outside doing this shit. You walking around telling people to break themselves. Like, uh, I'm gonna be broken. I'm gonna give up the car. Like he didn't break himself quick enough. Got himself shot. shot up and dead like i ain't leaving him it ain't, it ain't okay all right like i love me some sharif man if you don't get your salakum salam ass off of this cooler and let me get a brew like yet another positive influence trying to stray seeing the potential in kane trying to lead his friend the right way and then you know of course we have stacy stacy went outside shooting people stacy was playing football had a scholarship stacy looked old as fuck in the face but you know he was in high school all right <laughs> But we are not choosing to stick like glue to those people. We are choosing to stick to people like goddamn old dog showing the murder tape. Like you gotta say murder, goddamn murder tape. Ah, oh, I can't wait for us to talk about Chauncey. <laughs>
O-Dog is constantly being so reckless. He is so unconcerned for anything that I, I don't even care if I get caught. I, don't, I can show this tape. It does not matter. Like this tape throughout the movie is being shown. It's being ran around because he thinks this shit is hilarious. Like just how crazy O-Dog was and how irrational he thought in the movie, his concepts of what it meant to murder somebody, selling some drugs, like the value of life. Like it is absolutely scary to think that there are people out here in the world like that. And we know that they are like, he says throughout the movie, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care about none of that shit. Like, I swear I'm killing every nigga standing outside. I'm killing everybody. I don't give a fuck. Don't come in here acting like no Mark ass, trick ass, punk ass, ho ass bitch. We shooting everybody. Like, damn, we, we gotta shoot the babies. <laughs> he has no fucks given. This is clearly somebody in the movie that Kane is heavily influenced by and looks up to, even though he is older than him. Along with goddamn eight wax, you know, who got some snap on the petrol y'all selling all that shit in the hood and ain't nobody got no money like shut the fuck up like mca should have did some more movies like <laughs> mca did really really good in this role to me like him just being that og not like og like oh no you just the old nigga that's been just done so much shit throughout your life so much grimy shit that you know you, you just like to just to tag along like oh i need to shoot a nigga oh i'm sorry well, let me help you out homie Black, I got cow. like god damn the influences were horrible but the fact that he is looking up to these people because this is what I know. He had no real father figures in his life. This is all I was ever taught to be. So why would I try to do anything else? This movie, along with South Central, along with Boys in the Hood, always reflected on the importance of having a stable, good father in your life. Not that, you know, mothers are any less important because child, hello. <laughs> but just uh, in certain, like this particular element, like you need guidance, you need a father, you need a mother, you need stability to let you know what you need to do. Because if you don't, Somebody else like Old Dog is gonna tell you. Not that that wouldn't have made a difference because Kane was such a freaking follower in this movie. If it wasn't Old Dog and AWACS, it could have been somebody else. Now midway through the movie to the very end, it's just constant foreshadowing to the fact that Kane is just increasingly dwindling down to a very bad path. And he is eventually going to die all the way till we get shot that dramatic ass scene. <laughs> Getting carried into the house. Fuck the phone, bitch, you about to die over there. Like all the blood you would ever want to see <sighs> oh my goodness like what oh you got shot in the shoulder oh okay <laughs> But we see the criminal activity continue to increase after we initially kill somebody for the first time. That just made everything else flow much easier and feel like nothing. Not only are we selling drugs, not only are we down for 187, we are now carjacking, stealing cars, trying to sell them off. Like this is the first time that we really hear from Chauncey's punk ass, AKA Clifton Powell in one of his first roles. Like the roles that he took early on really reflected the roles that he got later in life and how we see him as an actor like the first time I saw him whoa 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 episodes of rock <laughs> being Andre with goddamn Charles S. Dutton who's here also about to choke his ass out because he was trying to sell crack in the neighborhood and then we have him here yeah come on around pick up the car by 10 30 Oh, 10 30. Yeah, motherfucker, 10 30. But you don't want to come around here. We don't want to come to this black neighborhood. You don't feel safe. You, you feel safe enough to come around here and tell the, the black man to steal for your monkey ass. Like, get your fuck ass. <laughs> But he was set up in life to portray shiesty ass characters and I love it so much. <laughs> but not only do we have things intensify with them being caught, stealing cars, doing jail time, we also have some heavy hitters here. Like not only do we have, you know, Charles S. Dutton, the hunt is on, giving them, you know, them good old lean on me ass speeches. <laughs> but we also get Bill Duke here, you know. So you said you dropped the bottle, you went to the store at seven. I thought, you know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? Like, <laughs> now I also can't remember watching this movie way back when. I used to really, really feel sorry for Kane. I used to be so sad, like, man, my boy going out bad, like, no, you was fucking up, bruh. <laughs> going back to watch this as an older person, you really get to reflect on just how many opportunities that he had gotten to choose a different lifestyle for himself, but he persisted to go into the opposite direction. Not only do we have the influence of Ronnie, not only do we have the influence of the grandparents, not only do we have great coaches telling us stuff like we can be more, like the hunt is on, you're the prey, watch out for yourself. Like, 
We have to move and be different. There were so many different opportunities for him to go, you know what, Sheree, Stacy or leave and go, you know, hey, maybe I need to switch up. But no, we're running around with old dog. <laughs> we doing time. We getting out. Mind you, you're doing time. You're 18. Old dog is 17. His ass is on the street shooting niggas up. I said I suck your dick. Nigga, what the fuck? I said I suck your dick. Nigga, damn, look me up. Bow, like, damn, he is. <laughs> Y'all want a hamburger? It got cheese on it. Like, just completely crazy. We are choosing the wrong person to follow. Now, as an audience, we do take in the fact that they are really young. Everybody's really impressionable here, but nobody can really force you to do anything. A lot of the shit here, old dog was not present for that. Once we got out where we changed forever, time is nothing. This is, you know, a continuation of the cycle. Pernell went to jail. My daddy went to jail. It does not matter. Not only am I going to get out and still be on the same fuck shit, but I got a 5.0 and I'm sitting on some bullshit. Nigga, order my motherfucking food. Uh, let me get a cheeseburger, some fries. Nigga, give me this shit. Oh, you got a pager? You a baller? You a baller? Give me this shit. <laughs> we robbing people. Yo, man, we ain't supposed to be doing this to each other. We supposed to be brothers. Oh, and then you trying to be woke? You trying to kick some knowledge? Give me this shit. <laughs> Diving head first into even more criminal activity. We are a dope boy, dope boy now. It was once said by a man who couldn't quit. Dope man, please can I have another hit? The dope man said clock, I don't give a shit. Let your girl kneel down. It's up, well, it depends on, you know, which version of Minnesota Society you have because in one you hear dope man, but in another one, you know, when two short come in the kitchen and say, we got some more in the back. You can hear I got a pocket full of stone by UGK. It all depends, but both of them bitches slap. I didn't really get too much into the soundtrack in this uh, movie, but it is very so like Cali. There's, you know, some DJ Quick. We got some Oakland with some Too Short. It's like, of course, we got heat. Like it is so well versed as far as hip hop at that moment and different artists. Like it's a pretty good soundtrack. And then as far as the movie, we are a public announcement. R. Kelly down. Hey, Mr. DJ. Come on now. Hey. Why don't you slow this party down? Yeah, it was, it was a, you're the only one I wanna slow dance, babe. Yeah, dedicate this one to my favorite girl. The public announcement was all up and through this movie. Now, out of all the shit that Kane does in this movie, all, all the killing, selling the dope, trying to be low key, a little stick up kid, a little robbery. The thing that comes back to bite him in the ass in the end is when he initially meets a girl by the name of Helena. Now, I wish we had gotten a little bit uh, more time with her since she is kind of like low key the downfall. <laughs> I wish we got a little bit more time with her, but it was kind of like a one and done situation. This is a female that that I hit and now she's pregnant and of course Kane respectable nice sweet Kane says the shit that I ought to need to say it ain't mine all right <laughs> I had the Jimmy on extra tight like hey see you later anybody else ever felt down in their spirit that it wasn't his like I just felt like Helena was that girl <laughs> I felt like she was you know that girl and that this was not his baby low-key but we, we, we don't get the answers to that. What we do get is a continuation of the cycle, even though Kane is not Anthony's dad. Throughout the movie, we do see his childhood, his upbringing, things that influenced him, starting to influence Anthony all the way to the fact that like so much shit is happening to Kane. Like, is he gonna die? Like, yeah. <laughs> but we have him really conflicted, even though we do have that strong presence of police brutality within the movie. You know, we have them constantly harassed to the point that he is hospitalized with Sharif. And then we have him really start to contemplate whether he should leave with Ronnie. Now, I think that point kind of changed for him because we literally have him do a whole shift overnight as to, you know what, maybe I should leave. Even though we've had all these things transpire, he doesn't see any value in his life. You have him constantly asking her, you know, why do you care why are you here i think he probably has some type of abandonment issues from um his parents you know not being there even though his grandparents were there it's like are you here 
for what? Like you could be here out of obligation. Nobody else was gonna take me, but here I have Ronnie and her son who looks up to me and Ronnie doesn't have any strong obligations to me. She could leave and go to Atlanta and not give a damn about me. So that must mean that I do have a stronger, higher purpose. Maybe I should go with her. Problem is, a nigga like Chauncey said, fuck all that. Drifting on a memory, ooh, 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 ain't no place I'd rather be than with you. We at the house party. Well, <laughs> loving you. Stay out my business, Stace. Get out my, well, 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 get out my business. If we want to get some honey love in the dark, the darkest shadow we love scene I've ever seen in my life. I was like, why we want to come here? We didn't have to look at all these murder, death kills. But as soon as we get some sex, I want to be modest. I didn't come to Minister Society to see some shadows have sex. Who thought of that? <laughs> But you know that they're, they're very, very modestly shot love scene. Baby, come inside. Like we could have got freaking dinky to some honey love, but instead we chose to have sex in the dark. Whatever, okay. <laughs> Not only do we have the situation with Helena and the baby, I'm pregnant. Like girl, you was already crying before you before you called. Like who else you had called who has told you to get the fuck on? Get the hell on. Who else you had called? <laughs> But the whole situation with Chauncey, I wish throughout the movie, if they could have fit it in somewhere in the writing, for Chauncey to maybe try to pursue Ronnie before the party, because it just seems like the whole situation went from zero to 10. We do know that, you know, he felt some type of way about Ronnie, but that was initially in the same night that they had even, you know, went beyond being friends, actually shared a kiss, actually had sex. But as soon as Chauncey tries to pursue her that night, it just goes up like, he finna turn in this goddamn murder tape punk ass chauncey gets pistol whipped at a goddamn party <laughs> gets upset and this murder tape that's been floating around the entire movie that old dog has been handing out like fucking candy on halloween he decides to turn it in to the police wow the hateration holleration in this dancery all of these things collectively heighten the fact that Kane needs to get the fuck out of Dodge. Not only because of everything that's going on in Watts, but now you have Helena and her cousin on your, her cousin, like, was this your cousin? You know, I'm Helena's cousin. She don't like the way you've been dogging her and I don't either. Goddamn Junior from Players Club, ruining lives one movie at a time. Like all your life, all your life, bruh. <laughs> Always rolling up with the bullshit. Gets his ass whoop. I love how we have Oda rushing nigga rush him oh no this entire movie just living for the debauchery the violence the fuckery like this just like makes his dick hard type stuff like yeah whoop his ass shoot him in the back like damn you need to go be sedated and lay down somewhere go lay down son <laughs> not only do we have that going on chauncey has sent in the murder tape i even love the fact that even though it is you know kind of sped up at, at, at this point of the movie like things are moving fast but they are sure to kind of give old dog this crabs in a barrel ass mentality he didn't understand anybody wanted to leave like sharif wanted to leave stacy now you like i don't know why you're leaving with this bra like what it's like he wanted so badly to keep his friend there in that element, to be in the fuckery along with him. Like, who said you get to go? Like, yeah, you you want somebody to tell you to go, huh? Uh-uh, we, we don't take crazy people to Atlanta. You gotta stay here with that. <laughs> we get down to the big move at the end of the movie, you know, before we go push this nigga's cat back, man. Like, th that couldn't have been your cousin. Like, the way Helena goes in for that hug every time I watch this kind of, like, girl, who was he to you? Like, was this somebody you was fucking on and you said another nigga you was fucking on? left you with a baby and like how was that going that wasn't your cousin stop lying <laughs> but oh we get to the, to the shootout we get to the drive-by Kane gets shot the fuck up like it's always the innocent people even though Kane was far from innocent this was his opportunity to get out not only to have a better life and a better future we get to get out with Ronnie and Anthony and we have Penel's blessing because you know we needed that. I gotta go with the deuce, Bobby. I gotta go. Yeah, we ain't need that shit. Like, what, what you was gonna say? No. <laughs> but you know, in 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 Kane's mind, he needed that. They was moving too goddamn slow. Now, even though the scene is quick, and of course it is heartbreaking, I know we was all sad to see Kane go, even though his ass was outside a little too often. I do like that they use that scene to show normally 
the innocent people get, get hit. I'm not just talking about Kane. Sharif gets hit. Or even the whole situation with Harold and Old Dog not seeing like, oh, that, that nigga's dead. Let's go. Like, let's leave him here in the street. Like, it's nothing. It's always nothing until it's you or until it's your homie. As much killing as um, Old Dog had done up until that point, to see Kane in that position, even when he got shot in the shoulder, you know, he th stay up, Kane. Don't die. I didn't thought that shit was funny. <laughs> and now, like, but full of fucking bullets. You know, what's wrong with this nigga like why isn't he just getting up like it's just it, it's nothing no it's always been something just as easily as you guys run around here taking everybody else's life somebody decided to come and roll up and push your cat back and take yours now we're not gonna get into you know the technical side with all the bullets that was flying anthony didn't get touched one time so technically if kane just would have laid on the ground shit he would have been all right but we ain't gonna talk about that it's all about him willing to give up his life for anthony's like i don't i don't even damn about myself like that selfless act of going to protect anthony from any straight bullets always commendable like if we could have had some of that energy kept that energy throughout our life we could have went a whole lot further but unfortunately we did not now i love stacy fight it fight it no not like no nah, stacy he gone baby he got shot a whole bunch of times <laughs> but you know as he said you know he had did too much to go back like even in atlanta like the way you conduct yourself in your life everything comes back tenfold like karma is a bitch like i don't even think like you couldn't just start over, man. You had caught some bodies. You was so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but unfortunately, his life is taken. And from the looks of it, Old Dog, even though it's really quick, it looks like Old Dog got arrested and went to jail for that murder tape. Like, nothing turned out well for anybody. <laughs> I'm in too deep. I then killed the motherfucker and I just can't sleep. One time trying to do a smooth up creep. And on top of that, ah, uh, niggas after me for fucking one of they hood rats. I ain't got time for the fucking bitches story. Niggas won't be got to come to my territory. Oh, they went out like straight up in his jail. Oh, such a sad ending. We wanted him to go on. We did. Like, I think like... 14 year old Tyro wanted Kane to go on a little bit more than adult Tyro because adult Tyro was like, well, there you was outside. <laughs> Don't be outside. Stay in your house. Stay in your house before somebody get a hold to the murder tape. Don't do that. Well, you guys, that was my review for Minutes to Society. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me so. Like, you know, y'all don't be leaving enough comments for me. I mean, I've been meaning to talk to y'all because, you know, y'all come, y'all watch, y'all like sometimes. Might leave a comment. No, if you enjoyed yourself and enjoyed this content, let me know so. Let me know why. Keep this relationship strong. Like, y'all want me to divorce y'all so bad. But I look forward to reading your comments. i see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.